in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our modeled guidance where we have a lot to go over in this video. Plenty of opportunities at snowfall for people across the nation from west to east and also severe weather on the way. Not only yesterday and today where we had major severe weather, including tornadoes on both days, but also an upcoming event in the coming days with our next storm system that's going to move through. So there's actually plenty to go over today, and it looks like it's going to be an action-packed transition from February into March, and I mean, that's pretty clear at this point. We can see that it was we move on with this European model. Uh, that we have basically a very strong low up here and this is creating severe weather underneath this low right here so we're seeing areas in illinois and indiana so far as i'm making this video it's been worse in illinois but we do expect impacts for indiana even into ohio as well there is plenty still on the way so please 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 be careful out there this is that same exact storm that we're going to see eventually weaken and create this basically new primary low. So we're going to see all this energy transfer over. We've been talking about this one for multiple weeks now, I would say. Um, we see that all of this broad low pressure in here basically causes a major snowstorm for the northeast. That eventually moves out, and I want to show you guys the total snowfall just for that storm total. Let's just switch this over here. And as you can see that we, we do expect about 6 to 10 inches of snowfall throughout these purple and pink areas. And same story over here where we see this going on up here. So there's a couple of areas with measurable snowfall here, plowable snowfall really, uh, throughout New, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and even up into Maine. This is going to be a pretty uh, region-wide event there for the Northeast. Now, as we continue things on, we see that we get kind of this southern slider action uh, as we basically have our jet stream feeding this storm further south here, just like this. And then it wants to kind of curve northwards. We're going to have to see what happens with this because if it continues southward, that's a much different scenario than if we see this kind of slide northward. We're going to have to go over that. Uh, and this is when we really expect major, major, major severe weather underneath another very large severe weather event as we see a cold front develop here warm front up above we're going to see warm humid air surging northward for areas in louisiana uh here in arkansas mississippi and even into alabama and tennessee so we're going to see multiple different areas seeing potential severe weather there thursday into friday uh, and even through the day on friday we do anticipate uh, potential severe weather here in the southeast as well so we'll be watching this area after that there on friday march 3rd again there is plenty of severe weather to talk about now those same exact areas that are currently seeing tornadic activity expect a pretty major snowstorm here with this storm according to the european model we see that switch over to snowfall and then for areas in illinois indiana michigan ohio pennsylvania new york this is a full-blown wintertime storm here uh, what we're seeing is the low over somewhere near Richmond, Virginia, and we're seeing some cold air surge southward here on the western end. So we should see plenty of snowfall, yeah, overnight. So we switched down all the way down to a 988 millibar low pressure center here. Um, we're seeing cold air really just surge southward over land here. We're seeing plenty of heavy snowfall in here, and this should be another Yet again, major snowstorm there for the Northeast. Again, let's go ahead and zoom in and talk about uh, this individual storm's total snowfall. So we'll take a look at the three-day snow snowfall here. And we can see that this one has the potential to be even more major here. As we take a look at things, 10 inches plus, about 10 feet to maybe 15, 10 feet, 10 inches to 15 inches here in these areas throughout Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire. Thankfully, not 10 feet, only 10 inches, uh, 10 to 15 inches there in these pink areas. Again, 6 to 10 here in a lot of these purple areas. Um, so that is what we're taking a look at in most of these areas I'm circling here as of now. And we could see this go up, go down. Go south, go north, go east, go west. There's a lot of time to go, and we're going to be tracking it closely. Tune in with the channel daily. We do upload every single day, and this is going to be my main talking point for the coming days. So we will be really, really featuring this storm quite a bit uh, as it brings the most severe weather potential and the most snowfall potential out of any upcoming storm, really. Uh, now, after this point, we do see the southeast ridge at times kind of fight back here. We're seeing a bit of a, a surging warm air mass here in a lot of these areas um, and we're seeing the cold kind of push down but what we see is a little bit more of a pushback with the cold in the east 
uh, than we've seen recently. And this leads towards what I would call a pretty zonal pattern where we're seeing the jet stream move straight from west to east. There's not a lot of curvature here at all. There's no troughs. There's no ridges. And oftentimes what this leads towards is pretty seasonable weather, seasonable uh, as in temperatures especially, and then very, very weak storms, nothing major. So if this does play out this way, you could expect to see a quieter pattern and pretty temperate temperatures, I would say, for the time of year, about mid-March. So that is what you could expect if this European model is correct in the extremely long range like we're taking a look at here. Uh, but only time will tell if that is completely correct. Now, the total precipitation tells us where these storms are going to go. We see a lot of these moving onshore to the west. And then as they reach kind of your Rockies and desertous regions here, they break up. And then they redevelop here over your uh, kind of upper Midwest, the, the plains. And even we see, again, a southern slider. So in the east, they're moving all over the place here. And this leads towards a plethora of precipitation where they're moving onshore. And then also where they're kind of moving after they move over this kind of no man's land here where we're seeing basically these storms weaken for a time. So they cross over that, they get beaten down, but they redevelop here over the kind of eastern plains, I would say. Uh, once they reach a little bit more moisture, uh, they really take off with that. Uh, now, as we take a look at the total snowfall through the model run, there's no surprise when you get two potential 10 inch snowstorms, you get very extremely large amounts here in the northeast and portions of the Ohio Valley there, as you can see. We expect back-to-back -back snowstorms for this area. Definitely the most wintry conditions we've seen all winter long for these areas. And really, you can still, even though this is much further south in, in the east than we've seen, you can still see that the jet stream is ridging for the most part over most of the time here of the model run because we're seeing this warm really fight back and then we clearly can see there's a big trough in the in the west here where this snowfall is allowed to develop much further south than we see in the east so i think it's interesting for the past couple of weeks i've been able to really really see the jet stream here uh, just by looking at the total snowfall i think it's a it's a extremely interesting thing at least to me it might not be that interesting to you guys of course but to me it is really really cool now as we take a look at the gfs model uh, we see this low here bring this snowstorm and we're going to compare the total snowfall here uh we see that this really breaks up eventually let's take a look at that total snowfall real quickly uh and we can see that it is a little bit more here than what we saw on that uh european model we expect upwards of a foot to maybe 15 inches or so here for kind of your cat skills area is what i would call it and then some of the berkshires in here as well and then surrounding regions uh, and then up to 10 inches here for maine and new hampshire as well so definitely some larger amounts here on the contrary uh compared to what we saw in the european model which we'll take a look at here just to compare here uh so here's your european model for that first snowstorm and then here's that gfs model so you can see there's a significant uh boost but I think what I like to see here, and especially in the short range like this, I better see this, but we see a very consistent location between this and this. It's not too different. Uh, that leads my confidence to be a little bit higher. Uh, now, which one will be right as far as amounts? Only time will really be able to tell. I think this is more of a now cast situation for that one in particular. Let's just go ahead and move back into our precipitation type. And we see snowstorm number two develop. This one, however, is a lot less wintry than what we saw in the European model because this low gets much further north. We see a lot more warm air flowing up the east coast, and this leads towards mostly ice and rain. Uh, and we'll take a look at the total snowfall here, but it is going to be much diminished from that European model. So we see kind of uh, definitely some differences here uh, on both storms. Now, I guess this one does show quite a bit here, obviously much further north than what we saw on the European model. I don't think this is accurate based on what the GFS model just showed as far as precipitation type. Uh, I, I'll kind of confirm that here or try to. Um, it did look like a lot of ice up there. Yeah, so when you get that much mixing in ice, I doubt that we'd be able to see a foot or even, you know, more snowfall there. Uh, maybe you'd be looking at the max amounts here in the very northern forests here of New York, uh, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Also very beautiful regions of the nation. In this area of Maine here in particular, uh, this area right here is very different than... Uh, and maybe even just this area in general, then the rest of America, you know, you have 50% French speaking people in most of these areas uh, because you're that close to those portions of Canada where they speak mostly French. Uh, so you have a lot of French speakers here. 
um, which is very interesting. And it's like lumberjack. Like, that's it. There's just lumberjacks. I remember driving through here as a kid and I was like, man, this is like, this is like what something I've seen in movies or something like just a bunch of lumberjacks. That's it. You know, I, there wasn't even families hardly just lumberjacks. That's the main takeaway I have from being a kid. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope nobody takes offense to that, but that's just what it was like. It was forests and then lumberjacks. That's what it seemed like to me. Obviously I wasn't able to see everywhere, but in general, it was my main takeaway. Now let's keep going with this. Uh, and I want to just go with our kind of United States view here. We see that we don't get as flat of a jet stream here on your GFS model. And we actually get a major trough there in the east. Another winter storm, but the primary low kind of stays over Canada. So you're going to be lucky to get snow showers down here is usually the type of situation that this would bring. Not going to be a very major system. You want to be north of the low, uh, like this case, for instance, which take this with a grain of salt, by the way. But you see the low is south of this snowfall. This area did, would have a chance of major snowfall in this scenario because you're kind of north of that low. You don't want the low to be above you. That's not a good setup. Um, now, take this with a grain of salt, but we do see this GFS model showing some wintry conditions uh, here in the east. But this jet stream seems a little bit flat, and it's pretty late in the year, so I'm skeptical. But we'll go over this every single day. We'll, we'll take a look at it, guys, and uh, we'll get to the bottom of it eventually. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.